Jones's time, an Arkham Asylum had not been kind to him. Whether it was the abuses at the hands of the orderlies, or the sessions orchestrated by Professor Hugo Strange, being in Arkham was like hell on earth for the killer croc. During his incarceration, his physical condition worsened as well. His ichthyosis vulgaris had caused the remainder of his hair to fall out, and the atavistic regression initiated on him by Strange had affected his mind as well. Atavistic regression is a form of hypnosis that reverts the brain to its base functions. Whalen had become even more animalistic in his mannerisms and tendencies. The orderlies had taken to only giving him raw meat, and his cell was kept cold and damp. This treatment and these conditions reminded Croc of his former torment at the sideshow. His rage grew with each passing day, and revenge was always in the back of his mind. During the riot of 1892, when Jack the Ripper caused a mass breakout at the asylum, Killer Croc was the reason that Hugo Strange lost an eye. His vengeance on the Warden of Arkham was exacted. He then escaped the confines of the facility, along with numerous others, venturing into Gotham City. Croc disappeared back into the Gotham sewers, planning to stay away from the public eye until he was all but forgotten. He lived off of the rats that made their dwelling in the sewer. Croc remembered the way the people of Gotham had treated him. He remembered his treatment at the hands of Taylor Haley at the sideshow. Croc would never forget, and he would never forgive. His mind was set on revenge, and his more animalistic appearance and mentality had set him on this path. Gotham was in high spirits. The Gotham World Fair was set to start in May of 1893. With the beginning of this celebration came one of the largest undertakings the city officials had ever seen. Vendors came from all over. Stage performers and novelty acts came from far and wide. One such act was Haley's Circus and Sideshow. These vendors, among others, would come into town to view the fairgrounds months before the fair would even begin. The Gotham Gazette took this opportunity to write a piece on the visitors. It was a good way to promote the fair even more. Some of these discarded issues of the Gazette inevitably found their way into the sewers. Whalen found one such newspaper, and upon reading it, saw that Taylor Haley would be coming to Gotham for the fair. The killer croc found himself filled again with visceral rage at the man who had originally cost him his humanity. In Whalen's mind, Taylor Haley had been responsible for his humiliation, as well as the death of his friend, Mary Dahl. The paper stated that Taylor Haley would be staying at the newly opened Labyrinthine Hotel, owned by one Ian Ashton. Whalen saw an opportunity to exact revenge. Professor Hugo Strange had done so many sessions of atavistic regression with Whalen that the killer croc now had a one-track mind. Jones had his eyes set on Haley and would not stop until he had achieved his goal. On April 2nd of 1893, Whalen waited until the cover of night to make his move. While wearing a hat and pea coat he had found in the sewers, Jones entered the hotel lobby and asked which room Haley was in. The lobby clerk, tired and disinterested, pointed him to room 207. Jones made his way up a flight of stairs to room 207 and burst his way in. He was not greeted by the sight of Taylor Haley, but instead a man whom he did not recognize. The hotel clerk had unintentionally sent him to the wrong room. The man tried to reason with Whalen, but Whalen's mind was already set on a downhill tread. The unfortunate man saw the killer croc in all his terrifying countenance, rushing at him with his teeth and claws bared. A stagecoach passing on the street below was bearing passengers. They were suddenly startled by a scream as the roof of the stagecoach caved in. The corpse of the man from room 207 had been thrown from the building and landed on them. The police were called, and Ian Ashton himself arrived to greet them too. Ashton told the police that his employee, the hotel clerk, had seen a large man in tattered clothing ask for Taylor Haley's room. Ashton told them that the clerk had fortunately given the man the wrong number, accidentally. The police interviewed Taylor Haley as well, who had no idea that someone had even come looking for him. When they described the witness to Haley, 
His face went white with terror. Haley knew exactly who had been looking for him. He told the police to look for Waylon Jones, the killer croc. The police put out a warrant for Croc's arrest, and a citywide search began. Jones had been missing since the breakout at Arkham, and was high on the police's list of priorities. Inspector Gordon, in cooperation with the Batman, contacted the vigilante and caught him up to speed on the case. The Batman had heard of Waylon Jones. The police had arrested him two years before the reign of the Ripper. Gordon told the Batman that they suspected Taylor Haley to be the Killer Croc's main target. Gordon had placed Haley under police surveillance as an assurance to the worried circus owner. The Batman saw that the best course of action was to prepare and wait. The Killer Croc would most likely return of his own accord. The Batman joined in the stakeout at the Labyrinthine Hotel, unbeknownst to the police officers assigned there. Two days after the stakeout began, the Batman saw Taylor Haley exit the hotel. Curious as to where Haley was going, the Batman tailed him through the streets of Gotham. Soon enough, Haley entered a pawn shop, and the Batman remained outside lurking in the shadows. It didn't take long for the masked vigilante to see a large figure wearing tattered clothing. The Batman did not waste any time. He leaped into action to confront the figure. As the bat approached him, the man must have heard him. The figure's coat fluttered as he turned and swiped his claws at the Batman. There was no doubt. It was the killer croc. The bat had heard of his terrifying appearance, but actually seeing Waylon took him aback. This hesitancy allowed the croc to attack. Jones was already in a rage. His anger overwhelmed all of his thoughts. He had seen Haley enter the pawn shop. This rage lent Croc strength, and he knocked the Batman onto the ground. Inside the pawn shop, Haley could see the commotion occurring outside. In a panic, he rushed out the front door of the shop. He wanted to run past Croc and the Batman, but Waylon moved much more quickly than Haley could imagine. The Croc turned and swung his fists, knocking Haley to the ground as well. The Croc pounced on Haley and frantically bit and clawed at the man. He might have killed the circus owner then and there if the Batman hadn't acted quickly. He used the rope on his belt to tangle up the croc and pull him back. Waylon struggled against it, but the Batman knocked him out cold with a punch. The killer croc came crashing to the ground. The Batman secured croc with more rope and handcuffs and then went to check on Haley. The circus owner was in bad shape. His leg was broken and he was losing blood. The Batman did his best to treat Haley's wounds, then left once the police arrived. Haley would later die in the hospital, despite the doctor's best efforts. The killer croc had gotten his revenge. Waylon Jones was adamant that he did not want to go back to Arkham. He was not listened to except by two people. One of them was Bruce Wayne. The millionaire had taken a vested interest in Waylon. He was aware that Haley had been a cruel man. Dick Grayson had shared with him the story of his parents leaving the circus. Bruce suspected that Waylon had been another victim of that cruelty. Waylon, while not in a normal state of mind, had kept repeating that Haley had killed his friend, Mary Dahl. The other person who took an interest in Waylon was E.N. Ashton. Ashton saw in Waylon someone whom the world had discarded, a standpoint that Ashton himself was familiar with. Both the combined efforts of Bruce Wayne and E.N. Ashton allowed Waylon to be transferred from Arkham Asylum to another facility, Bell Rev Penitentiary. Waylon would remain here for rehabilitation for years. Waylon found the accommodations at Bell Rev much more agreeable than they had been at Arkham Asylum. Most of the other inmates at this prison left him alone due to his appearance. Croc found that this had advantages. The other inmates had a respect for him, even if it was out of fear. It did not take long for Croc to become the impromptu king among the other inmates. At long last, King Croc felt that he had found his place in the world. <laughs>